Uh, so the next table here is seasonal dependency analysis. Do you want to design your system so that in the worst generation scenario, you provide electricity for all your needs in your system, or you want to design your system based on the highest irradiance month or based on basically the sunniest month of the year so that your system could have electricity for all the loads only in that month, or you want to use an annual average irradiance value for your system. The difference it makes is that if you want to design your system to meet the needs in worst case, that means the lowest radiation month, you need more number of panels required for your system. You basically want to have a reliable electricity access throughout the year. So you need to design your system in a way that in the worst solar radiation month, in the lowest month of solar radiation, your system is still running smoothly with providing electricity for all the loads. You basically don't want that your system work properly during. So if I'm using a hybrid system, that means if I have a backup generation like a micro hydro system or a diesel generator, that's going to supply part of the demand for electricity. I put the fraction of demand I need to meet with my solar PV system here. Let's say for the purpose of this example, I'm going to provide all the demand by the solar PV system. So I keep this value as one. And then I need to pick a, a solar panel. Every solar panel on the spec sheets provided by manufacturer or on the label behind the panel have some standard values mentioned on them. You need to copy the values as mentioned in this uh, label here into this table. So this is the panel I'm going to use in this example. Uh, so the next table here is seasonal dependency analysis. Do you want to design your system so that in the worst generation scenario, you provide electricity for all your needs in your system, or you want to design your system based on the highest irradiance month or based on basically the sunniest month of the year so that your system could have electricity for all the loads only in that month, or you want to use an annual average irradiance value for your system. The difference it makes is that if you want to design your system to meet the needs in worst case, that means the lowest radiation month, you need more number of panels required for your system. You basically want to have a reliable electricity access throughout the year. So you need to design your system in a way that in the worst solar radiation month, in the lowest month of solar radiation, your system is still running smoothly with providing electricity for all the loads. You basically don't want that your system work properly during, let's say summer, and then during winter, you can't really use a lot of equipment because the system doesn't get enough solar radiation to generate electricity. However, if you have different preferences or if you have budget limitation, you want to maybe use annual average or best case. Usually this is supposed to be worst case scenario. So you could change it to best case scenario or annual average here. I'm going to keep it as worst case scenario for this example. So the next uh, table here uses the scenario I'm selecting here for designing the solar panel system and charge controller. The first thing we need to do in this table is to pick a charge controller. If it's gonna be MPPT or PWM, I'm going to use MPPT. And let's say that I'm going to find a charge controller that has 500 amps of capacity, 500 volts of input from the solar PV system, and a minimum input voltage of 100 volts. If you don't find the minimum voltage in the spec sheet of your charge controller, don't worry about it. You could use system voltage times 1.2 to put here instead of a specified minimum voltage. So uh, you need to find these values based on the spec sheet of charge controller. It's based on basically the choice of charge controller you want to have and the budget for your project and availability of equipment. So I'm going to, let's say, use this um, charge controller. 
uh, the next thing here is that the system tells me that I need 10 panels in series connected together and five parallel strings connected together. I need a total of 50 panels in my system. Uh, so before we move forward, let's see here that PV output with 50 panels is 12,000 and I only need 8,000 again. So if I have limitation on the budget and number of panels I need to use, I could play with these numbers, these arrangements here so that I use less panel numbers so that with a tolerance margin, I have enough electricity for my loads, but also I'm minimizing the capital investment required. So let's say that I'm going to use, instead of uh, 10 panels per string, I'm going to use eight and then it reduces this. I'm going to actually, instead of six parallel strings, I'm going to use five. So let's see how it changes. Yep, I think it's a good one. So instead of 50 panels, I may need only 40 panels to provide electricity in my system. Uh, with that said, when you decided how many panels you want and what arrangement of them you want in your system, you could move forward with more understanding on the charge controller. So as you see here, for this system, you only need one charge controller. But if I was about to use a different charge controller, chances are that, oh, it tells me that this charge controller is not able to provide enough output for your requirements. So if I use a different charge controller, then I need two charge controllers instead of one. So if this number is more than one, then you need to make sure that you're using a charge controller that is actually capable of handling of multiple charge controller in a setup together. Or you could break down your system to smaller off-grid systems, each one using only one charge controller. So if I wanna use specifically this charge controller, I need to break down my system to two separate systems being isolated from each other. Uh, oops, yeah, I would choose a very small charge controller here and everything turned red indicating, oh, you're not really doing a good job in designing the system. So let's keep it at uh, 500 and the, the maximum C rate that charge controller is going to send to the batteries is within a range that's reasonable for the batteries. Otherwise, this cell would turn red suggesting that I need to change this design configuration so that the batteries could handle the, the current receiving from the charge controller. Uh, so the next thing is that it checks if the design current, as I mentioned, is within a reasonable range for the, the controller because our charge controller is rated for 500 input current, right? Maximum charge current of 500 amps. If this arrangement supplies more current for charge controller, this will turn red indicating that your charge controller is not capable of handling the current coming from the PV system. So right now I'm at 255 of design current, but my charge controller is rated at 500. So it's reasonable. I actually could manipulate this number and I probably could downscale this charge controller to something smaller while the system is still within the reasonable range. Now for the purpose of this example, let's keep it like this and move to the protection tab. 